Jungwoo News presents North Korea. North Korea wants China to stop calling Kim Jong Un fat. Living the life of an absolute dictator can be rough on the waistline. Just ask North Korean dear leader Kim Jong Un. Kim has been packing on so many pounds that even China has been taking notice. With Chinese netizens dubbing him Kim Fatty the Third. Other popular nicknames for the lumpy leader are Kim Fatty Fat and Kim Abundant the Third. Well, Kim ain't having that. North Korean officials have asked their comrades from the north to stop with the name calling before heads start to roll. Apparently, the tons of fun tyrant has ballooned from binge eating and drinking to help deal with fears of assassination and his insomnia. It probably also doesn't help that the double-chinned dictator consumes massive amounts of Swiss cheese. Fatty Fat has even reportedly asked scientists to develop a diet pill that works without diet or exercise. Damn! North Korea should export that pill to the U.S. As for the Chinese. The two-ton totalitarian should just nuke up. North Korea blew up one of its own cities by accident. North Korea fabulously blew up one of its own urban cities accidentally during a ballistic missile test last year. Last April, when Kim Jong Fatty shot off a Hwasong-12 intermediate-range ballistic missile, it sadly couldn't even deliver a short range. Instead, it crashed in the city of Tokchon, located about two hours from Pyongyang. The missile was launched from the Pukchang airfield, but things went haywire as it flew 24 miles to the northeast, blowing up industrial or agricultural facilities in Tokchon. In the meantime, while North Korea is busy annihilating itself, what's Orangina doing? Bragging about the size of his bigly button. Wonderful. Meet Joseph Pwag, Kim Jong-un's 90s alter ego. North Korean megabelly Kim Jong-un and his dictator daddy -o Kim Jong-il reportedly traveled on Brazilian passports during the 1990s. Fats traversed the globe as one Joseph Pwag, while Il meandered the world as Lee Chong Choi. According to Reuters, the Brazilian passwords were authentic, but the IDs, not so much. Apparently, Joseph and Lee Chong traveled all over in the 1990s from Hong Kong to Brazil. Word is they both took some time for R&R &R in Tokyo, too. Trouble with that is, the land of the rising sun is an age-old enemy of the DPRK. It's unknown how the Kims obtained the documents, but Brazil's foreign ministry is on the case. Wonder if they ever swung by Manhattan, you know, to catch all that awesome real estate. Kim Yo-jong baby rumors captivate South Korea. Hey, even brutal dictatorships need little ones. Looks like the sister of Kim Jong-Fats told South Korean officials during the Winter Olympics she's expecting her second child. Yay! According to unnamed government sources, Kim Jong-Jong told Seoul officials she was carrying during her visit to Pyeongchang between February 9th and the 11th. Kim looked to be a bit under the weather during her visit, leading to baby bump speculations. South Korea knows almost nothing about their authoritarian awesome cousins up north. They weren't even sure Kim Jong-Jong had had a first child. Things obviously aren't going too well in Pyongyang, if Fatty needs to send out his pregnant sis to handle foreign relations. Yikes! A crew on board a Cathay Pacific flight saw a North Korean missile blow up over the Sea of Japan last week. Cathay Pacific flight CX-893 was en route to Hong Kong from San Francisco on November 29th when the crew saw the missile from their plane as they were passing over Japan. Those on board had a first row seat to watch the DPRK missile blow up and fall apart on re-entry. <laughs> the crew immediately contacted Japanese air traffic control to report the incident. 
Cathay Pacific says it has no plans to alter its routes in the region. It's not like you really have to worry about the North Korean missiles anyway. It's the U.S. ones you need to watch out for. Pyongyang's launched its latest ballistic missile test last Wednesday despite international sanctions and warnings. Ooh, sanctions and warnings. Korea's Unite for the Olympics. One of the coolest things about the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang this February is the sudden thawing of tensions between South and North Korea. The two countries dropped a bomb, announcing they'll march under one flag at the opening ceremony. The plan is to also field a joint women's hockey team. And as a beating bonus, the North is also throwing in its 230-member all-female cheerleading squad. Pyongyang may send up to 500 athletes, cheerleaders, musicians, officials, and reporters across the demilitarized zone. North and South Korean skiers will train together at a resort in North Korea before the Games. But who's going to foot the bill? It remains to be seen if the goodwill during the Games will continue after the Olympics, but knowing Kim jong Fatty, the world should be just fine. How would the U.S. military fight North Korea? As tensions continue to mount on the Korean peninsula with no side backing down, the U.S. has threatened a massive military response to any potential North Korean nuclear attack. But what would that look like? The U.S. would likely deploy large groups of its Navy and Air Force to Japan, Okinawa, and Guam to bolster military presence there. A Stratfor analyst told Business Insider that they'd also possibly maneuver submarines and ships closer to the north and target nuclear facilities through airstrikes. Helicopter-deployed buoys would listen for North Korean submarines, which could then be destroyed by more advanced American underwater craft. Experts reckon the U.S. would not invade, but rather defend South Korea as the North Korean army charges the border. This scenario would also see U.S. Special Forces parachuting into strategic locations around Pyongyang for surgical strikes. If, in the extremely unlikely scenario, North Korea strikes Guam or another U.S. territory or ally with a nuclear strike, the U.S. has the option to respond via land, sea, or air. Most agree that the resulting American retaliation would lay waste to Pyongyang and kill thousands, if not millions. Or, you know, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump could just simply step into the octagon and see what happens. How will Kim Jong-un travel to meet with Donald Trump? The location of next month's meeting is still to be decided. The Washington Post speculates that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump's meeting may take place in the Korean demilitarized zone. Switzerland, Sweden, Russia, and China were also posited, as was the U.S. itself. But it is not clear if the North has a transportation capable of getting there. Analysts told the Post that North Korea has an old Soviet jetliner. This plane from the 1960s has a wingspan of 43 meters, is 53 meters long, and 12 meters tall. It can fly up to 5,400 miles, meaning it could reach Hawaii or the U.S. West Coast if leaving from Pyongyang. Unconfirmed reports last month put Kim in China, saying he got there via an armored green train. If true, he could also travel by rail to a European venue, via Moscow, or to a spot in Russia itself. Another way is for Kim to travel with a shorter-distance Air Koryo Tupolev jet. Analysts say Kim could also borrow an aircraft from one of North Korea's neighbors, or travel with South Korea or Sweden. However, the Post reports these options could be embarrassing for the North Korean leader. How do you think the meeting will happen? Kim gets chemical. This subhuman has chemistry that's got Asia and the U.S. on edge. Reportedly, the Wellifant now has his goons loading anthrax onto intercontinental kabooms. Who knew he was a fan? He certainly doesn't look like your average metalhead. The North reportedly holds 5,000 tons of the garbage and other nasty stuff in stockpiles. 5,000 tons, huh? Somebody's overcompensating. Traditionally, ICBMs are supposed to go like this. But almost always, the Norths go like this. 
That's right, Kimmy. Projectile dysfunction is a wider problem than believed. But if you want to man up, you could drop gloves with the commander in derp in the octagon. It might not go the way you think. Kim Jong-un claims North Korea is the highest peak. North Korea's supreme leader has found a new hobby. Posing for photos on really high mountains. The ever fit and healthy Kim Jong-un apparently claimed the Mount Pike to North Korea's tallest mountain. And what did the glorious leader have to say about his adventure? Climbing Mount Pike to provides precious mental pabulum more powerful than any kind of nuclear weapon, state media quoted Kim as saying. Or in other words, Kim gets more kicks from climbing mountains than he does from nuclear bombs. Reports state that the claim was part of a military visit to North Korean fighter pilots in the area. In addition to mountaineering, Kim's other hobbies include staring vacantly, pointing to maps, and some good old-fashioned state inspections.